Hey guys, remember Casey's 3x5x7, the bump cuboid? Well, uh, the thing is, I realized I'm having a lot of trouble solving it, and uh, so a solving video would not be interesting. Nevertheless, I am going to make another video about it, and that is a mechanism video, so let's disassemble that beast. Okay, so I did say that I had trouble solving it. Well, I do have trouble with the three cycles and everything, but that's not the main reason why I'm making this video. Uh, most of the people who are going to get their hands on that are probably going to make a solving video already and I'm not very good at solving cuboids so I figured I should do something that not many people do on YouTube and that's showing the mechanism of a puzzle and I got Casey's approval to do so so here we go he told me there were a few centers that weren't super glued so I'm going to use this one and I'm going to disassemble that beast so let's let's just disassemble it layer by layer uh, with this on top. I'm just gonna make it easier for me and try to at least get the corners right uh, like this for example. Pair up the corners that way I'm already on the right layer. Uh, Alright, that's just a lazy man's way of disassembling a puzzle or, or at least reassembling it later on. I'm just thinking about the rest of this video. Alright, so let's take this screw out and see how it goes. So this is a 7x7 shape mod that was easier than I expected. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so I guess that would be a Shengshu 7x7. I'm not an, an expert uh, on 7x7 uh, on seven seven brands, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, wow, this is really interesting. I love that mechanism. It's, it's very impressive. So, you have obviously the core and the different layers of mechanism. I'm going to need to find which uh, piece belongs to which face. Now, uh, luckily for me, I already paired up the, um, for example, these centers are paired up either with centers from this face or this face. So the opposite uh, center pieces are all regrouped together. So that's a good thing. Uh, now this is going to be, well, I already don't know where it's going to be, so that's a good. That's not necessarily a good thing. All right, it was on top. So these all belong to the top layer. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna disassemble the whole thing at once. It's probably not the best idea, but why not? Okay, this is gonna be confusing. So, let's see. You've got some edges, like these, for example. Let me see if I can focus on that. I'm gonna put a white background behind it so you can see. All right. So these are the classic 7x7 edges. What's more interesting to know about these puzzles are the extensions. Now, as you can see, this is an extension piece. I, I can see that Casey did not fill in the parts. It's not very important because you, when you turn it, you don't actually see the parts, or at least most of the time you don't see them. But he did a perfect job sanding the, 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 the 3D printed extensions down so that they match up perfectly with those parts. I don't know if you can see, you can still see the lines uh, on this face. Uh, that's actually due to 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing, sorry. Um, here you can't even see the printing lines, which means this was perfectly sanded down. It's it's pretty impressive. I, I gotta be honest with you, that's that's quite impressive. I can see he maybe he tried to fill some parts as well because you can see some filling here. Um, or maybe that's just the glue. Uh, I can still see some in there as well. So most of the parts inside the seven, the the three x five x seven, are fused because it's a three x five x seven and not a seven x seven. So you've got sets of, for example, two times three parts that are fused. That would be a corner. Uh, that would be a three x five. No, sorry, a five x seven face corner. I think. Let me let me just think for a second. Um, so if you've got two parts fused like this, this means this is part of the five face. And here you've got three, so this is part of the three face. So this is the three by five face right there. And you've got a lot of parts like that, so that's that's very interesting. Uh, I think reassembling it is probably going to be a nightmare, but let's let's just try it. So let's start with this this face. I don't know why. I just feel like starting with the. Oh no no no! I, I disassembled that center, so I should probably start with this one. Let's try to find all the parts that are the right size for this face, which means this is the intermediary face. It's uh, it's not one of the long ones, it's not one of the short ones, it's one of the ones in between. 
So let's try to find some edges like these that fit in this face. And uh, this is going to be taking me quite a while, I think. So I'm going to speed up the video so you can see the interesting parts. So let's start with these two. They fit perfectly here. And I'm going to try to make some 3x3 three three edges or something. Oh, I forgot one thing. This is made out of a uh, Shengshu 7x7, seven seven, so that means that there's a 3x3 three three in the middle. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to start assembling this first. I think it's going to be much easier to do so. So for example, like this, I'm going to assemble the 3x3 three three in the middle. So yeah, I'm going to start with that. It seems more logical and much, much easier. So let's go with that and... Uh, yeah. Okay, just a small interruption uh, of the assembly of the edges because I want to show you something. Uh, I've assembled these parts and, and uh, it took me about like three minutes just to find the parts that should go there. So I think this is actually going to be a much more difficult assembly than I expected. Uh, because, well, every single piece is different, so it's actually quite hard to find the parts when you're trying to assemble it. So I'm gonna carry on now, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know as soon as it gets interesting. So when I finish the first, uh, well, the 3x3 three three layer, and uh, yeah. Okay, so I've assembled this right now. So the edges and the corners so far. Um, my first thoughts uh, on the assembly right now, I think from a Cuber point of view, I think it was a great idea to use a Shengshu 7x7 because it's very high in quality. It's, uh, it's a very fast puzzle. Uh, from a designer standpoint, you can't see it on the camera, but I'm, I'm sort of having tears stream down my face right now because I, I'm just so frustrated. <laughs> no, I, I'm joking, but seriously, this is an, a nightmare to reassemble. Uh, it is, it's absolutely terrifying, and uh, you know, well, I, I, I guess you could compare this assembly to a, to putting a USB key in a computer. You put one piece the right, the, the wrong way, and then you, you know, you don't realize that it's the wrong way. You try 50 different parts, and then you realize that it was the first one all along, but you just didn't put it the right way, and it, it just, it's so frustrating. So yeah, this is just the USB key of puzzles. Uh, Alright, now let's carry on the assembly. Before doing the upper part, because I want to do it uh, later actually, I'm gonna assemble the, the lower part um, and, uh, and try to, uh, to assemble the last part as one block so I can just screw it in. Maybe it's not gonna work, but I hope it is. So let's, let's try this. I'm, I, I'm gonna need to find some parts that correspond to each other, like these for example. These are edges. Um, of the... I don't know where actually, it's probably here. And uh, the only thing that I'm afraid of is that I have to um, make sure that it's not the wrong parts, otherwise I'm gonna well slide them in and then I'm gonna have to disassemble them. So I'm probably gonna verify with like one part that it's in the right place and then see for example it's not in the right place, just take it out and try again with a, with a, a different uh, slot. So I'm gonna try this. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna assemble the bottom part and then I'll get back to you. So I'm gonna fast forward this and I'll see you in a second. I just wanna show you guys something. I, uh, I found a good way to find which edge goes where and uh, I actually paired up uh, edges four by four to you know start with those, um, those uh, five part edges. And um, I found a way, like if you, if you look at the length, uh, you look at the thickness here of the, of the 3D printing material, and you can see that it's the same as this one. But then, you, then again, you can see that it's not the, the right length here. That's because the thickness here is not the same as this one. So that way I know it's not this part, but rather this one, because here you can see that it's the right length and it's the right width as well. So all I have to do is assemble it like that. And that way I know that this is the correct part that goes there. Whoa. So yeah, this is a, a nice method for assembling a, a bump 3x5x7. So let's, um, let's carry on this, uh, this assembly now. Okay, now that I've assembled all the sort of wing edges, uh, well, I want to assemble the central parts. Uh, I 
don't think there's any other way than to just look for them in this pile of parts right there. So I'm, I'm gonna try to find those. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, half of them should look like this. So these are uh, corners adjacent to the center. And uh, the rest should look somewhat like this part here. So kind of strange, which is the the part that's not next to the corner, but even one one step further away. So the part that's on layer two, three. So yeah. So let's carry on with that and see where it leads us. All right, so I've got three layers assembled, and uh, now I think this is going to be more of a challenge because I'm going to try to assemble the two remaining layers blind. Or maybe if this one is assemblable... Oh yeah, I can see that the cuts that they used aren't conical or spherical, but they are um, cylindrical. So I'm just going to be able to assemble the last layer like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this... Uh, well, the, th the fourth... Whoa, that was, that was close. The fourth layer from the bottom. I'm going to assemble it here, and then I'm going to assemble the last layer outside of the puzzle and then assemble it on top of the rest and just screw the center in like this. So, so let's try this and uh, see if that works out. So it seems like this is much easier than I thought to assemble. So, so um, oh, you can see this is actually quite cool. You can see the inner layer uh, moving while the, the outer layer stays put. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, this is much easier than I thought to assemble at the end because those parts are actually easier to find because there are not many there. Uh, most of the parts are fused and so I thought there were going to be many parts like those, but no, so that's a good thing. Um, now all that's left is to assemble the last layer uh, upside down with all of this and, uh, and hope for the best. <laughs> So I've assembled the first half of the bottom face, oh well, top face, sorry, plus two adjacent edges. Now I'm going to rotate this that way and assemble the center in there and because I think this would be very hard to assemble later on. This is the, the part that goes on the center like that because it's a 7x7 made by Shengshu. Again, the brand is causing me problems in assembling this. So I'm going to assemble both centers, that way that's done. And I'm going to assemble those edges on the side so that I can stabilize the center uh, right where it is. Uh, otherwise, I think it's going to be very difficult to assemble um, if I don't do this. So, so I'm going to stabilize the, stabil, yeah, stabilize the center, having trouble speaking English. And I'm going to assemble those, uh, the rest of the parts on top of that uh, because I think that's probably the best way to go. Uh, that way the center doesn't move, and I'm not worried about everything popping um, because I think the center would be a pain to put in place if it moves a bit, just a little bit, so like that, for example. Okay, so I'm actually gonna assemble the edge first and then try to place it inside the slot where it's supposed to go, and now I've got the full bottom or top face, whatever you want to call it, that I'm going to place right here. This is extremely... Oh, okay, I, I can't believe I didn't show you this. This is extremely satisfying. I just take the top face and slide it in like this. I, I'm going to see if I can try to do this from another angle without everything popping. Uh, nope, I'm not going to do this. So I just want to show you this. It just slides, clicks into place, it's beautiful. So, now that I've just scared myself, uh, I almost popped right there, you didn't see it, but it was, uh, it was very, very close. So, so let's see. Alright, I'm screwing this all the way. Alright, and now I just need to put a center cap, and you've got a fully assembled, um, fully solved, not that I get any credit for this, because obviously I didn't solve it. 3 by 5 by 7 bump cuboid. Thanks again, KC, for lending me this. It is a beautiful puzzle, and I'm glad I got to see the inside. And I'm glad I actually got the opportunity to, the opportunity to try and solve it, because it was a very difficult solve, and I didn't even manage to finish it, but at least I had fun with this puzzle. It was awesome, and thank you so much for sending me it. I'll send it back your way as soon as possible.
So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe and like my social networks in the description below. Also, Casey's uh, YouTube channel, or actually his website, is in the description below as well. Feel free to check him out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.